I think this evening I would like to demonstrate this photograph with the clouds in uh, a blue, a wash, graduated wash sky. So the first thing to do is to, for me to damp my paper. in preparation for the wash. So I've got two inch hake here. You can use a nice wide flat brush or a round, a flat round, uh, a wide round, something, if you've got a number 20 that would be wonderful, but the biggest one that you've got to spread the water on you could also use a little piece of sponge for the job. So just making sure that the surface is already damp before I put the, the wash on. And make, make sure that the water's as well spread, evenly spread as I can. So hopefully you can see that shining. Yeah, it's okay. So um, it's important to let that sit for a while and settle into the paper so that the fibers of the paper become nice and damp and um, will give me more time to spread my color onto it. Uh, so I've got some colours here. I'm going to just check while that's settling into the paper. And I've got some phallocyanine blue, which is I think a little bit too coloured, so I should add a little bit more to that. And this is a good way of adding water to a mixture to control it. With a sponge you can just add it a drop at a time so you have a lot of control over how much water goes into that mix. It's better than going to and fro with a brush uh, because you, if you've got pigment on your brush you don't want to keep dipping that into the water. You'll be diluting, you'll be wasting your pigment um, and uh, so it's, it's a good idea to use a sponge for that. Okay, so that looks okay. And the other wash, the other colour of wash is going to be a warmer um, Indian green blue. It's called Azure Blue in my set. Again, I think I'm going to make that a little bit stronger. So it's a good idea to, to mix up more paint than you think you're going to need for a wash because it's so annoying to run out halfway and then you have to stop and mix again and that will make a difference to the, um, the, the way the colour behaves. So it has time to dry that in, in that time when you're mixing and you may get some line or some uh, accumulation of colour that you don't really want at that time. So, let's see how this is doing. Still quite, quite wet, but I think it's had plenty of time to settle into the paper, so I'm going to just remove the excess now. Just lightly taking a clean tissue over it. Trying to keep it even. Okay. Right. So in my photograph, the landscape is right at the bottom of the picture space. I've selected it because it's mostly sky, because we have to see skies today. So uh, I'm going to work with my cake, which I have pre-wetted so that it doesn't 
absorb too much moisture and just need to angle my board. Something under it to angle it. And I'm going to just start with the light blue, the light cool blue. And then mixing a little bit of the warmer blue down the slope with some of that, giving time for that little reservoir to form, adding a little bit more as I go. Taking that reservoir down and giving just a little time to allow that moisture, that moisture to carry the pigment really down to the bottom, what will be the top of the picture space. There might not be any need to refill your brush every time you touch it across. It's something you can estimate from the look of the reservoir. So that's going to take me all the way down quite well. And once I'm down at the bottom of my picture, I'm taking the excess moisture out of my brush and I'm going to take up that unneeded moisture at the bottom so that it doesn't give me a back run as it dries. Now that's really quite wet still. Um, and I think I can let it dry flat now. Take it off the slope and let it dry flat. And while it's doing a little bit of drying, I'm going to mix up a pale, a light, lovely grey. Um, I think I'll use a little permanent rose. And I'll mix it with a little fallow turquoise. And I'll add a little tiny bit of yellow ochre. So that's a mixture of permanent rose, fallow turquoise, and yellow ochre. So I'm going to make, make a bit more of that. Yes. And a bit of a cooler colour. Sponge into it. Oh, let's see how this is doing. It's still quite wet. So, 
what I put into this will spread quite a long way. Um, I think I'm going to use a slightly larger brush than my mixing brush. This is a number 16. I shall pre-damp my hairs before taking up the colour in my in it. And then I'm going to try spreading a little of this colour into the wet, wet wash, not having too much moisture on my brush. So I'm just trying to look at the sort of stratus layers in the distance. As I come down the picture space, I can narrow my marks and make them into longer, thinner cloud forms um, that will hopefully give a sense of perspective. Now that's going to keep on moving until it's dry. And if I didn't want anything else to happen in this painting, I could now dry it with a hairdryer and then move on um, to doing the landscape. But I've got some little white clouds bobbing around, so I'm going to lift those out with a tissue scrunched softly and I'm going to just pull out some cloud shapes. And if you notice um, in, a, in a sky, you have perspective. So pay attention to the size and closeness together of the clouds if you want to get a sense of perspective into your sky. Down here, there are some little rows of distant clouds. So, and because it's all wet, these shapes are going to shrink as the moisture tries to re enter the surface. It's still damp where I've taken the surface of the paint off. So, it may be necessary just to look after them and just. Make sure they are the size you want and where you want them and the brightness that you want. It's nice to have some brighter ones and some softer ones. Um, and then once you've got your sky how you want it, again, you could, you could um, dry it at that stage or you could decide to try to just touch in a little bit of contrast in the belly of the cloud. So just so this is quite quite dry now. Well it's not it's still damp actually, but it is drier and the colour isn't moving as much as I want it to. So I'm taking another brush and damping it and I'm just going to tickle the, the edge of that sh shape so that I can soften and move that colour around a little bit. And I can keep a, a, um, a white edge to the base of the cloud if I want one. So I've got two brushes on the job now. One is applying the pigment and and the other is softening the edge with a little touch of water. So 
so you can try also just making a little bit more impact down here where the landscape would be towards the base of the picture space. You can see that the surface of the paint, surface of the initial wash is drying. Here it's still damp. Here it's a little bit drier. Um, it's possible to manipulate it a little bit with a second brush. But it's a good idea to try to do things and leave them rather than messing about too much so that the first marks can stay fresh. <laughs> 